Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. This is Ezeal, Lance Ron, Mount Ronis, and I uh, had a question on one of my YouTube um, inboxes here from one of my subscribers, and they were kind of asking me about what I do as far as for PvP setup, runs, things like that. Um, I am by no means like the say-all, be-all of BGs. Um, I know enough just to be dangerous. Um, I generally get, you know, probably five-plus kills and, you know, bajillion assists because I'm a Lancer, but um, what I want to do is just kind of cover a couple things, kind of my thought process on how I do BGs and, and some things that I think are, are helpful. So first thing is, is Titanic Clash is uh, the Frey Wind Tier 13 um, Lance in comparison to the Clef Wedge, uh, which is a PvE Abyss weapon. Um, the, the Titanic Clash, I've noticed, does about 25% more damage with all the PvP additional damage done. Um, the other thing too is, um, if you'll notice, the Clef Wedge actually has double attack speed, um, 8%. So I've got 16% versus 8% on the Titanic Clash. And one thing I'm doing just with my playstyle, I don't know, maybe other people can get used to it, but I just can't get used to the Titanic Clash because of that 8% attack speed. It is a huge difference there. Um, you know, the 8% attack speed does increase your animations. It also increases, um, you know, your attack speeds and everything. So um, make sure, you know, if you do have a Clef Wedge, I think it's better and it's and you get more out of it as far as with that additional attack speed um, one of the things too is uh, crystal setups here um, so what I want to do is kind of cover some of this stuff as a Lancer um, we really really get a nice buff off of our uh, endurance here or with the uh, pristine grounding Zyarks and basically the two endurance I've done some testing and, and have found out that this is actually better than the um, indominal Zerks here and I got this one in here just kind of show some of the stats here. So it just decreases your PvP uh, damage received by five. I think that that five is a, a like a solid number, whereas this endurance is actually going to increase here as far as on my defense. So if I were to take this out, I get a reduction of about um, 300 um, defense roughly, which um, I'm finding is is substantial as far as whatever I'm, I'm PvPing. So um, it's probably more like two three percent um increase i think as far as uh, damage reduction um by running to the uh, pristine grounding zerks um and then the other thing is is uh, i usually like to run with more health because we do have healers in here um so this gives me a nice boost of just over eighty thousand health um there um, I'm not gonna really cover the jewelry too much because uh, I don't think mine is worth anything. You know, I've got some some stun reductions, which I think are the best. Um, decreases your duration of stun effects. Um, you get some of those stacked up. That's definitely very good. Or reduce the stun um, of actually proccing on you. Now with the crystal setup, as a lancer, you've got a pretty good impact, and with your wallop skill, you, you're gonna knock some folks over a lot easier. Um, so I do prefer to do um, you know additional damage to knock down opponents. Um, I like to have my swift crux so I can move around just a little bit more while I'm in combat. Um, this one, the fine salivating crux is kind of a, a give or take. It depends on your play style. As a lancer, I find that I survive quite a bit, um, one versus threes or higher sometimes, um, just depending on who I'm fighting against. If I'm fighting three people with tier 14 conjunct plus 12, they're going to murder me. But if, if it's anything less than that, I'm, I'll have a really good survivability. Because of that, um, I like this specifically because this helps me regenerate my mana and allow me to do more skills, uh, damaging attacks and stuff. And then I do the uh, the cruel uh, crux here, which increases my attack power on knockdown opponents, which I think is very beneficial. So what I want to do is I want to go through here and let's look at our glyphs here. Um, the way that I look at this is I try to do as much DPS um, as potentially as I can and also um, round out with some additional supports classes there or support skills. Um, I find the back step, you know, maybe that 25% cooldown is good or not. I mean, I think it's at six uh, seconds already. You reduce it down even further to about four and a half seconds. Um, it's it's good for those tight tight you know areas where you're trying to get out as quick as you can. You're getting hammered on. You got those stuns going on. Um, I would most definitely recommend you've got to get the wallop. The wallop has to has to be there. You've got to get that. Um, that's our hardest hitting skill. That's what's going to get you those kills um, if you can get that landed on somebody. Now with the ability, uh, with the uh, energetic chain leash, 20% um, cooldown. I like to have that on cooldown because you're running 15 versus 15s. I, I roll generally with one or two sorks. I try to get everybody, you know, uh, in raid call, and we try to discuss, and, and, and I let them know, hey, my Giggly is on cooldown. Is your fire blessed? Is this skill, you know, basically try to tie some of that out. 
Now, um, the Iron Will, this is gonna be where I think a lot of people are gonna kinda differ here on this. Um, I do like the increased damage absorption um, to last just a little bit longer. This one right here with the Lingering Iron Will, um, I really don't like this one, but I kinda had this as kind of a filler because I couldn't find anything else for four skills points at this time that really worked well. Um, so I just kinda did this, it kinda helps out a little bit. And then, of course, my uh, Iron Blow, our lockdown blow, I've got additional 20% damage with that, and then also I've got the 30% damage, um, a movement reduction um, as well when I hit somebody. And then, of course, I've got the lingering menacing way, which increases the duration effect by 50%. Um, Pledge of Protection, um, if I had the ability, I think I would get this over the um, Lingering Iron Will because of that increase um, recovery you get from doing Pledge of Protection. I use it if I have four people near me or less. Um, if you do it in a 15 versus 15 in that middle first push, you're going to pretty much get close to dying, I think, because um, you're absorbing everybody's damage there. All right. The Adrenaline Rush, I think... I think this may be a potentially good one. You get a 10% increase in attack speed. Um, so I do use the general rush quite a bit, but with the three points there, it just kind of left me like 49. Um, it might be worth replacing that instead of using the iron wheel that I had down there for additional lingering. And of course, I don't really use second wind uh, glyphs there. Uh, let's see, charging lunge. This one you might do the, um, I think you might consider doing the decreased cooldown, but honestly, you know, I don't see that much of a need um, all the time for that reduction. Spring attack, definitely get this one. You want to make sure you get that additional damage because that's going to come off of your three combo hits or your spring barrage you're doing. There's another glyph you can get, which I don't have at this time, which decreases movement or a 30% chance to reduce movement. Um, you definitely might consider that. I don't really use Infuriate, but there is a 50% um, reduction of speed for five seconds, which is four. I've actually good thought about maybe switching this out. So you might definitely consider doing that as well. Um, let's see, so Retaliate and Debilitate, you're really not going to use those in there. I do use the additional long shot leash to pull people in for three meters because you got those people that jump in the water and they drive me absolutely bonkers when they do that. Um, if I had that point of, of uh, Iron Will, um, I would get this, I would believe too. I mean, if I could, the decreased cooldown 20% is very nice. I don't really see this as being beneficial, the seven points just for a four second reduction of speed. You could just as easily do the Infuriate. Um, and then, of course, aggro's not good. And we'll worry about the charge, uh, the count, shield counter there. Um, Guardian Shield, this one's very interesting. I use Guardian Shield on that first middle push, um, and then I'll basically use it on cooldown whenever I see people to try to help out with that. So there's a 35% cooldown, which is actually pretty considerable. You might think about doing that. I would not use this Onslaught skill in the Shield Bash. Onslaught has a very horrible um, uh, tendency not to hit and especially if it's a Popo or Ellen, you're going to get lucky to even hit a fourth of your actual onslaught hits on them. Um, I would, however, say you want to do that increased duration because if your shield bash does land, you definitely want to do that. Uh, decreased cooldown, you know, this is kind of up in the air. I, I generally used to run with this, but I've kind of opted against it for more of a cooldown uh, setup here. Challenging shouts, the only thing that might be considerable might be the, um, let's see, the 21 Endurance. Uh, that you could get from this glyph right here, but I just I don't see the necessity in that onslaught. None of this is even worth it. Now I do get the the pump uh, pump stand fast here that does increase your damage has 30 percent chance to proc. But when you're in a GVG or on a GVG a battleground and you're getting hit all the time, that's based off of the hits landing on your shield. So basically, you're pretty much going to get this proc every single time. So you're going to get an increase in power by 15 percent. And then, of course, with these here, I wouldn't even worry about doing the combo attacks. Um, you could do maybe some MP or the, um, the the shield counter, but I, I just don't see the need in those. Um, you know, it, when I'm doing some of this stuff, I really think about more about crowd control with this because I don't see Lancers as really being a DPS class. I see them as being, you know, the ones that try to bring people in with the Giga Leashes, try to get the mass damage dumps on them by uh, AoEs. Reign of Arrows is just horrible, horrible if you get caught in that. Um, even for me, if I have a 12, uh, there's an Archer with a Kajunt plus 12, I mean, he's, he's hitting me for like 8 plus K every time that hits, just normally. So um, hopefully this kind of gives you a little bit of an idea of some of the, the, the ideas behind PvP um, as far as, um, you know, some things to consider there. 
Um, it's kind of late here. I'm kind of tired, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to head off to bed here. But, you know, if you have a different build that you think works better or if you think there's something I could switch out to maybe make mine a little bit better as well, um, I'm always open to constructive criticism and open debate to try to improve um, because I'm always trying to want to strive to be just a little bit better if I can to help the community, help my guild, help my BGs, solo, party, whatever. So, uh, as always, I appreciate it, and you guys uh, have fun and have